Well, good evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. It is going to be a party tomorrow night as the Dallas Cowboys open the season against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They say that the Dallas Cowboys have no chance in hell. But we're going to find out, can the Dallas Cowboys beat the spread? Tonight, we are doing the very first, the very first points line event with my buddy, Stewart, a.k.a. The Wolf, as well as Roz, Crazy Eyes, The Clown. We're going to do our pick segment tonight. And let me, without further ado, kill the music and say, Roz, what's up, man? How you doing tonight? How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm uh, I'm actually excited. The season is here, and it is time to make picks of actual games that mean something. Amen. Amen to that, man. I am ready to rock and roll, Mister Wolf, aka Stu. How you doing tonight? Are you ready to do this? Doing good, sir. Doing good. I'm ready to do this. I'm excited to do this. I can't wait to get. All these months of waiting behind us and see what happens on the field. Yeah. Let the players do the talking for us so we don't have to answer the trolls. Well, I, I got to tell you this, Stu. You, you seem a little bit, you know, kind of, eh, I'm so excited. Is it one of those, it gets me right here? It, it gets me right it, 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 Right? Is that what it is? I'm, dial, I'm dialed in, boss. I mean, literally. I can't, you're, you're, I can't you're, dance. I'm picking. I'm paralyzed. My legs don't move. I can you, sit here and bounce for you. you I'm ready you're to getting punch. like Michael I'm Anthony Fitness, you know? Buccaneers in the mouth. All right. And I'm All right. excited. All right, so good people, here's what we're going to do tonight. We are going to go through week number one, 16 games on the plate. We are going to make our picks. We are going to document them. And then next week when we do this again, we're going to go back and see who is the king and who's the dog. So... Without further ado, who would like to start this whole thing out? Who would like to be the very first one to pick a game? Stu, you mind if I kick us off? All right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to narrate this for you. How about that? I was going to do the Dallas Cowboys and Tampa Bay instead of the first game, but, you know, this is the Cowboy channel. We're going to save that one for last. I actually want to start out with the Philadelphia Eagles – Going to Atlanta in that Mercedes-Benz Dome, and I don't know if you've ever been there or not, that round screen that they have is actually pretty cool. It is actually freaking amazing. Never been. Okay. Well, the Philadelphia Eagles are the road dog. They're a three-point underdog, and typically the home team gets three points. So basically Vegas is saying both of these teams are ass. A am I right on that one? Yes, sir. Yeah, you're, you're both agreeing with me on that? Well, they're not saying they're an ass as much as they're saying they're both equal assness. Okay. They're winning challenged. All right. <laughs> so, Ross, since you're starting this off, Philadelphia Eagles, are you taking the three points or are you going with the Atlanta Falcons to beat the spread? This is one of the few times I disagree with uh, a checklist I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're taking the spread for the Eagles. I'm taking the Eagles for a straight-up win. Forget the points. I'm calling the Eagles to introduce their new, young, unnamed defense to the Atlanta Falcons. Okay. So you, you do get the points anyway, too, so that, that kind of helps you out. All right. Stewart. Your pick for this game. What's up with this? Are you taking the Philadelphia Eagles? Are, are you going to be? You know, are, are we going to go two and zero here for the Eagles? I, I don't want to say this, but every time I look at it, I can't not. Say, we're, we're doing this to be right, and my gut is telling me Jalen Hurts with Smith, Rager, and company are going to go out there. They're going to put the points up on the board in Atlanta. They love finding a way to lose. They're going to lose this one. Philly's going to take it home. Well, I tell you what. I don't want to say that, but it's just what I feel is going to happen. All right, so we got two of you taking the Eagles. Well, I'm going to have to be the lone wolf. Oh! And I'm going to take, actually, the home team on this one. 
Um, having been to that Mercedes Benz dome there, that place is actually pretty loud with Falcons fans, and I think actually with football coming back and looking that they're playing the Eagles, uh, they of course don't have the blues and that bad taste of all those games they gave up last year. In fact, they weren't in the house when they had all of those you know collapses that they had. That I'm thinking that the Atlanta Falcons fans will come there to play, and it'll be a hostile crowd for the Eagles. And I, I'm I'm just not sold on Hurts, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the Falcons and give up the three on that one. All right. Welcome, Philly 500. Okay. Yeah, Philly 500. It looks like uh, you got some of your, your fans up in here that literally love you. It pained me. I worked it so many times. What it it? All right. Next up, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers getting six and a half points playing at the uh, Buffalo Bills. Mr. Wolf? Thoughts on that? Buffalo's going to smash it all day long. You I got Buffalo easily with the win there. Easily with the win? I think easily. I, I think the addition of Najee Harris and Pittsburgh is a great addition. And I'm not saying Pittsburgh is complete ass, but I just feel it's going to be a big year for the Bills this year. All right. Okay, I hear you on that one. Okay. Uh, and, Ross, what are you doing on this one? I suck against the spread, but straight up, when I pick the Bills to win, we know it's going to happen. If I had to pick the spread, I think it's going to be close enough that I, 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 I mean, I'm taking the Bills, but it wouldn't shock me for the Steelers to actually just show up and at least grind the game to a halt enough that Buffalo can't just run the points up throwing the ball nonstop. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to take the Bills myself on that one. I'm going to take the home team on it. Uh, I think the Bills are up on the up right, on the upswing, of course. That's a clean although, sweep. Although I do believe that they're going to come back down to earth, and I do think that New England ends up winning that division. Don't sleep on Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick last year was using that as a red shirt year to rebuild and reload. Um, did, you so, really just, did you really that, just that's even fighting words? Did I really what? <laughs> That's fighting words right there. Look, I'm look, sorry. Look it's, it, it's not fighting words if, if it's the truth. I'm sorry. The truth hurts there, buddy. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on to the Minnesota Vikings, okay, with Kurt freaking Cousins is uh, a three-point underdog against the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm sorry. Sorry. Three-point favorite to the Cincinnati Bengals in Paul Brown Stadium. Are you taking Kurt freaking Cousins or are you taking the Cincinnati Bengals with Joe Burrow? Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson. Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson. Minnesota Vikings. You like that? Okay. That defense is – I like Zimmer. I like that defense. I like the Bengals, but uh, Kirk Cousins and the Vikings for me. Okay. Stu, you, you kind of said it, but I don't think people quite heard you. Do you like that? <laughs> I'm not going to get too, too excited. That's what Kirk that Cousins is going to say after this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it. It's another the one Bengals, I don't like. The Bengals, to me, they're just – they're not ready. Uh -huh. They're not ready. Chase is – Chase might be Justin Jefferson this year. But that remember, that took four games for him to get started. So what else do you have? You have the same bangles you had last year. Okay, yeah, the bungles. Okay, so you're take, you both are taking Kurt freaking Cousins and laying the three points. I'm going to have to join you guys on that one. I just don't see Cincinnati being good enough to beat Minnesota. Minnesota, as much as we uh, talk about how bad Kurt freaking Cousins is, he's still a very capable quarterback, even though he does throw games at the end of games um, and has a turnover at the wrong time. But Minnesota is definitely the, the more veteran team that will be going against a very young one. 
All right. And Everson Griffin came home. Don't forget that. Uh, I had to literally do the walk of shame. <laughs> the walk of shame <laughs> to Kirk Cousins and basically say, you know the thing when I said your ass? Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I, I take it back. I'm sorry. Okay. That Bengals offense is on the rise, though, with Burrow, Chase, yeah, Higgins. Yeah. Well, Burrow, it, it, you know, the problem with, of course, but week one Minnesota. is you just don't know. You just don't know week one. All right, so next, at Ford Field, we have the San Francisco 49ers announcing that Jimmy G is the starting quarterback, is laying seven and a half points. Do you take Jimmy G over the Lions, Mr. Wolf? I think you answered that question when you said the Lions. Uh, San Francisco 49ers defense. Mm-hmm. Running game, one of the best in the league. Mm-hmm. Jimmy G doesn't have to be great. Uh, it's the Lions. But Jared Goff. All right. And, of course, my man Roz. To be clear, I'm taking the 49ers. Okay. The conversation was over when you said Lions. Okay. I heard that. So, in other words, you won't be picking the Lions at any point this year. No. Is, is that, okay. All right. Just we, we, we clarified that one right there. All right. San Francisco or the Lions, Brother Ross, Brother, Brother Ross. You ever take that long trip, like drive down to, I don't know, like down Route 81, you get to Waynesboro and you're like, hey, I need to get myself a nice shower, clean sheets, rest up after that trip. And you get into the you get into the hotel room and and the water doesn't work. Yeah. There's a roach on the floor, yeah. and and you say to yourself, "Damn it! Why did I even show up?" <laughs> oh wow! Okay, San Francisco coming west to east, and while I think they are a hell of a better team, uh huh, I have that weird feeling. Things happen in week one, and I'm taking a lion. Oh snap! Really? Well, I they walk you. in San Francisco coming into a shithole. Oh, can I say shithole? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. I just did. But Said it they're, they, they're going to take that long trip east, mm-hmm. and when they get there, they're not going to be happy. That's all I'm saying. Okay. All right. Yeah. San Francisco minus seven and a half. Uh, I just think they're way better. Okay. They, they know Jared Golf rather well. Um, so I think San Francisco and that defense will, you know, definitely take care of business on that one. Next up. Interesting thing. Somebody asked me today about Derrick Henry, who had over 2,000 yards last year, and they asked me what I think Derrick Henry is going to be doing. That is the Tennessee Tennessee Titans and, of course, home against the Arizona Cardinals um, are giving up three points. Derrick Henry, I said, what happens to running backs after they hit that magical 2,000-yard season always take a big nosedive with the exception of Barry Sanders will Derrick Henry start taking a nosedive and I mean he can come back down to earth and still have 1500 yards but it won't be 2000 are you sold on the Tennessee Titans anyone go ahead Stu what you got on this one I think Derrick Henry gets off to a good start Roz already hasn't predicted week five to get hurt. I'm not wishing injury on anybody, but I don't know. I don't know, really. This is one of the ones that kind of screwed with me a little bit today when I was going over everything again. Kyler Murray is the hometown kid. I like the Cardinals with DeAndre Hopkins. A.J. Green allegedly looks good again. Uh I don't know about the running back situation with Edmonds and Connor. Tennessee, Ryan Tannehill, since he left Miami, has been a pretty steady, if not good, quarterback. Yeah. They've got A.J. Brown and Julio Jones now, mm-hmm. plus mm-hmm. Derrick Henry. Mm-hmm. Uh, give me Tennessee. Um, what was the spread on that, Roz? Tennessee is favored by three, a home point advantage. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, then man, just straight up give me Tennessee. Yeah, I think I'm about to go with you on Tennessee on that. I do think Derrick Henry does come back down the earth some, but I don't think it's going to matter. I still believe the Titans are the better team there. So, from there, 
we go well, to, can I oh I'm sorry I just say that we'll, we'll skip right ahead but I just want to make sure I got my Arizona pick in oh I'm sorry I <laughs> you know, I'm getting old. It's been one of them long days, man. No, that, I've been that's running all right. I'm lone wolf. It's okay. Okay, it's okay. All right. But the clowns don't howl. You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, see, that's how you know. That's how you get ahead on these things. We all pick the same picks, and we're all in the same spot. Um, okay, so we then have the Seattle Seahawks coming halfway across the company to Lucas Oil State Stadium to take on the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts are favored by two and a half. So, interesting. Usually the home team gets three points. They are saying that the Seattle Seahawks, with that defense, I think that was almost as bad as the Dallas Cowboys defense, will be enough. Who you taking, Ross? I love what Seattle's doing, and I love the new coordinator, and he's going to unleash the, 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 the Russell Wilson, but not against that Indianapolis defense. I think the home field advantage this time around is actually going to be the Colts having their healthy people not having to travel. Carson Wentz back. And that <laughs> For how long? Stepping up. Okay. Did you just laugh at Carson Wentz? Can yes. Stop laughing at Carson Wentz. People have been laughing for 10 years at him. You can never stop away. laughing at okay. Carson yeah. Wentz. That's a dumb question. This chance. Sorry. You know, uh-huh. you know, there's like, oh, he's back for week one. It's like, okay, but for how long? I'm sorry. Carson Wentz is literally an accident waiting to happen. Um, but, you know, that's my opinion. <laughs> I, I, it's my opinion. Stuart, what you got on this one? I love what Roz had to say about the Colts' defense, because th- that defense is tough. And I, I like the pieces on Indianapolis's offense. Jonathan Taylor in the backfield, young stub back there. Michael Pittman's going to be really nice. <laughs> but it's Carson Wentz. And I'm going to go with Russ and the Seattle Seahawks with DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Carson, and crew. Uh, well, take that. I, I think we're going to have the trifecta here. I'm going to take the Colts in this as well. Um, that will be a two hour earlier game for I said Seattle. Seahawks. Oh, you, you said Seahawks. I'm sorry. I'm he sorry. Said, no, he did. He said Damn. Russ. He said, he said I'm going to take Russ okay, excuse over me, that excuse me. defense. I'm going to take Russ, actually DK the whole, and Tyler Lockett. I'm going to take the whole team on, on over this. Over Carson Wentz's. Led Indianapolis. Yeah, you know, I, I hate to to actually root for Carson Wentz, but I think Indianapolis has the better defense, and I think it's this early in the season is going to be more of a defensive struggle. Um, also, with Seattle having to go two hours, you know, uh, east, being an eleven o'clock kickoff, you know, usually teams from the West don't do real well when they come east. So I'm going to take the Colts on that one. Now, one that's kind of near and dear to my heart here. The L.A. Chargers coming to FedEx Field for a 1 o'clock kickoff. And Washington, the home team, is favored by one. What? They're favored by one. Well, you got that right? Depending on, okay, by DraftKings, they are favored by one. On Caesars Book, it's a pick em. On FanDuel, they are the underdog by one. So it depends on which site. Yeah, it's literally where you go for that. I had pick them and I had minus one chargers. Yeah, so we'll say pick them. How about that? We'll just we'll, we'll settle for the middle. Who you picking? Chargers or Washington? Give me L.A. Washington's defense is really good, but Ryan Fitzpatrick is Ryan Fitzpatrick. He's ass. I like Justin Herbert down there in L.A. a lot. He's got Keenan Allen, a healthy Mike Williams, at least for game one. Austin Eckler and crew. Their defense isn't terrible. Give me L.A. over Washington. Okay. Uh-oh. I'm going to clown him right now because he didn't listen to the boss. And the boss just got done saying east to west or west to east, 11 o'clock kickoff, mm-hmm. take Washington. They're going to tell the Chargers, go back home, take a nap. Actually, for the Chargers, it'll be 10 o'clock kickoff because it's three hours difference from L.A. to D.C. However, oh, They're going to be really far behind or really far ahead then. Huh? However, I can't pick Washington. I just, you know, it's just <laughs> something. It's ingrained in me that I can never, ever pick Washington. I will take the Chargers, and if I have to, I'll take the loss. I'd rather do that than take Washington. I just can't. I just can't. I just physically. I'm a solo can't clown. Do that. Yeah. Well, Look, I, I'm rocking. I'm rocking my my skull and crossbones. I got my own Joe Boo that I oh, run. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right, and then we have the snooze fest, 
we have the New York Jets going to Carolina to take on the Carolina Panthers and their former quarterback, Josh Allen. And it is New York getting four and a half points. Sam Darnold. What did I say? Josh Allen. Oh, my God. I must be on crack tonight. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> you know, I hate to say this, but, you know, all okay, you, all, hell of I hate good. to say this, but, you know, all you white guys look alike. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. I'm sorry. Sam I mean, we, we really do want you to put a beard and a bald head on us. Uh, I had a longer beard not too long ago. I, <laughs> okay, and a shaved head. That was just a joke, okay, because I was <laughs> trying to be funny, and maybe it wasn't politically correct, and I apologize for that. Okay, yeah, I've, All right. I don't have to, but I forgive I'm you, sorry. Mark. Sam I'm, Darnold. I'm good with my friend Mark cracking a joke. Sam Darnold against the, with the Carolina Panthers. So you're thinking revenge factor here? I, I'm thinking Jets rookie quarterback. Shaky backfield, led by Tevin, never really been all that good. Coleman. Uh, Sam Darnold, everybody that gets away from Adam Gase seems to do better. Tannehill did. Everybody that seems to get away from him does. I'm going to go with Sam Darnold, Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore, and all those boys. Robbie Anderson. Give me Carolina. There you go. Okay. All right. Roz? First, you don't have to be politically correct because it's not a political show. Second, oh, they'll still come if it after. Wasn't you. for the four and a half point spread, I wouldn't even think twice, and I'm not. I, I, I'm going to take the Panthers. The Jets with the spread might be a decent gamble, but the Panthers are going to win outright. I have to agree with you on that one. I, I'll Wilson's take the Panthers. Not trash, he, and he's got receivers in Corey Davis, and he, he's. You took Elijah, the Panthers. Elijah Moore, but it's a rookie quarterback and it's the Jets. And Sam Darnold has a lot of weapons there in Carolina with a, a better coaching staff, I think. All right, Give so me. moving right along, we got the Who'd Jets. you take? Oh, I took, of course, Carolina. Carolina, I said to Carolina. Okay, all right. Uh, I just no, wanted to make Je- sure. The Jets are a train wreck. I'm sorry. They're, they're, they're stupid when they let guy let, let, you know, let, let the people go that they've let go. From the time they let go, Demario Davis, I said, you're fucking idiots. And there's no way I can never pick you. Okay, Jacksonville Jaguars giving up three points to the Houston Texan in the Desperation Bowl. Who gets this win at NRG Stadium? Or does anybody even care? Well, that's easy sleepy money for me. Give me the Jags mm-hmm. over the Houston Texans without Deshaun Watson and a whole lot of drama going on down there. Give me the Jacksonville Jaguars and the young kid, Trevor Lawrence. Okay. But James Robinson, happy to eat. Not happy that ETN is hurt, but he gets to play. It's going to be a nice James Robinson game. Uh, give me the Jags. All right. And Ross? We got, we got my buddy here, Dead Man Walking. Okay. Because right? it's only going to take one needle to the Tyrod Taylor to Ooh. make the, te- the Texans even worse than they already are. Ooh. The bottom, it's the Texans are dead man walking. Give me the Jags. All right, I'll take the Jags on that one because <laughs> t- the Texans truly are, uh, I would say, a Canadian football team, but they're not even that good. All right, we've got the Doodoo Browns, five and a half point, um, getting five and a half points going to Arrowhead against Kansas City. Who are you taking in that one there, Roz? Kansas City or the Browns? Or do I even have to ask that one? Ask the rabbit. What do you think? <laughs> He's asleep. He said the Chiefs. He said take the winners. Amen on that one. And, and, and Stu? Chiefs. Easy. Oh, actually, he was in the bathroom. My bad. Okay. Go ahead, Stu. All what right. were you saying? I, I, Chiefs, it? easily. Ba- Baker and crew, they got something going down there in Cleveland, but it's the Chiefs. Um, I think the Cleveland Browns will be coming back to earth and being the doo-doo Browns again. I, of course, will take Kansas City at home. Airfield, Arrowhead Field is a hell of a home field advantage. They are just too good. And a game that will be near and dear to Roz's heart. Four o'clock Sunday at Gillette Stadium, the Miami Dolphins. Versus New England Patriots. Dolphins getting three. Roz, what are you taking? Is there any other answer? 
right, he's taking. I mean, the, is there any other answer but fins up? All right, he's taking the tuna fish sandwich, and what are you taking there, Stu? I'm giving that rookie quarterback a hard time with the Miami defense, and I'm taking the Dolphins. I'm gonna oh. go. Oh, okay, I'm gonna take New England and Bill Belichick because the interesting thing about mm. Bill Belichick is. Every quarterback that he has ever had who has started his very first game under Bill Belichick has won. And we're talking about Tom Brady. We're talking about Jacoby Brissett. We're talking about Jimmy G and Matt Castle. It's hard to bet against Bill Belichick with a new quarterback. All right. So I'm going to be real. I'm going to be real Debbie Downer when I have to remind you the kind of defenses that have been in New England during all those quarterbacks. Okay. We'll, we'll see. We'll see next week, won't we? We'll see next week. All right. We got the Cheeseheads giving up three and a half points. Going to New Orleans. What you got there? Are you going to believe in Jameis Winston's former 30 for 30? As the New Orleans Saints quarterback, that's going to take off where Drew Brees left it? Or are you taking the bad man, Aaron Rodgers? I'll start with that one because we know what his answer is going to be in the first place. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I believe I can the LASIK fly. and the dedication to getting his head out of his ass has helped Jameis. Replacing Drew Brees is a lot to say, but I think Jameis is going to be good this year, especially when Michael Thomas comes back. But Michael okay. Thomas isn't there right now, and right, Aaron right. Rodgers is the bad man, allegedly. Okay. Uh, that's going to be the Green Bay Packers over the Saints. All right. Roz, I'm assuming you're taking the Green Bay Packers. Am I right about that? You'd actually be wrong. I told y'all really? I put my picks in before we ever came up, and I even laid the parlay out there in Vegas. Woo. I picked the Saints straight up. Oh, my God. And, and so I was going to pick the Saints anyway just to piss you off. But I, I guess, <laughs> you know, because – Hey, look, I'm trying to keep it real, okay? I, I'm a, I may be a homer, but, like, the Saints, come on. I'm a believer. Well, the, I, I tell you what, I have been in that stadium, and those fans in New Orleans, they ain't no joke. The only place I can think that's anywhere close to that would be in Seattle. And being in Seattle is like being inside of a jet engine as a plane takes off. So, Let me ask you this. What's that? Does it matter to you they're playing in Jacksonville this time? Oh, that's right. I forgot they're playing in Jacksonville. I still take the Saints. Still a lot closer to home. I forgot about that. They are playing in Jacksonville. See, but I yes. feel sick doing this segment already. I, I picked Hurts to win, and I picked Rodgers to win. <laughs> well, you know, you're kissing Hey, look, I just you're picked against your my own Packers. Okay. I own a share that I, I, I picked against. Okay, so we've got the Denver Broncos going to New York City to take on the New York stinking Giants. And they are three point underdogs. Who you taking, Ross? Oh, come on now. Ain't nobody betting on Danny Dimes. You're not believing in Danny Dimes? Are you kidding me? Not against that Denver defense. Have you seen them boys out there? Oh, I've Bradley seen Chubb may not even show up, and Von Miller's going to eat. I agree. I agree with you on that one 100%. And Stuart, what are you picking? Not a whole lot to say there. Danny Dimes, Denver defense. Defense, give me Denver. Uh, there you go. Uh, I believe that Daniel Jones will be replaced at the end of the year along with Jason Garrett. And uh, I believe Denver will be coming back around this year and will be a decent Not to mention, I know this is in fantasy football, but one of my favorite fantasy football players to get outside of our guys, Jerry Judy, one of the best route runners in the league. Second year, much like CD. Okay. A lesser quarterback. Jerry's going to have a good year. Javante Williams there. Teddy B is a game manager, but it's Danny Dimes. Definitely. All right. Okay. Next, we have the Chicago Bears taking on the uh, Rams. And, of course, the Chicago Bears are mm. giving up seven and a half points. Who you got? It's at SoFi, that new stadium. This will be the first time that that place has been packed. 
about that one, Ross? Sunday night game? Yeah, I'll tell you right now, it don't matter if you take Trubisky or Dalton, or even if you had actually thought for a moment Justin Fields was going to start, you're not walking the Bears over the Rams. The Rams are going to win that one walking away. Okay. All right. Stuart? I agree with my brother Ross. Matt Stafford, for all the shit we give him, he's, he's a good quarterback. He's got Robert Woods of Cooper Cup, Tyler Higby, Daryl Henderson, and or Sony Michelle. That defense of the Rams, give me the Rams all day. Sorry, Andy Dalton, but when your offensive line lets you get knocked dirty and they don't help you back up, that says something. Okay. Interesting point here. I will bring up something that, that's been actually – in my crawl for a couple of days here as the Dallas Cowboys get ready to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where they literally have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as literally being invincible. But do you guys know that the 8-8 eight and eight Chicago Bears actually beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Who would have thought that? Well, yeah, everybody gets a bye week. Chaboom, boom. Okay. With that being said, I'll still take the Rams at home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And then we have the Baltimore. We won 20 straight preseason games, and it's really screwed up our regular season. Ravens giving up four points to the Raiders at that brand new black Dark Vader Stadium. Who you got on that one? Me. Monday night. Monday night football. Lamar Jackson. The Gus Bus showing he can get the job done. Baltimore. I mean, it's. I don't, I don't want to completely trash Oakland, but. Or, sorry, uh, not uh, Oakland. Las Vegas. Las Vegas now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but outside of Waller, I kind of can. So give me the other side of the ball. Okay. And Brother Roz. I was trying to think of something to say about the Raiders. Their ass. I am a huge John Gruden fan when he's not coaching on a sideline. But um, the important thing here is that Lamar Jackson is going to start his MVP, MVP tour as the only game televised at that time on Monday Night Football. And let's be real. They lost J.K. Dobbins. They mm -hmm. lost Justice Hill. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're already they're already being counted out by a lot of talking heads as far as they don't have anything because mm -hmm. they also lost their number one pick, Rashad Bateman. Yes, to IR. Mm -hmm. They are going to step up and they are going to prove that it's their turn. Okay, well, and uh, to that, they have signed Le'Veon Bell, who has yet to have a great season since 2016, since he created all that stink about wanting to get paid. Um, they are actually hurting. They've lost two of their top uh, four wide receivers. Of course, we've talked about the running backs. They're on the road three hours later than they're used to. It is actually Monday night football. So that would be like 11 o'clock Baltimore time. But then again, you've got John Gruden, who it's been a horror story uh, for the Raiders. It's just been terrible. you got to take the Ravens. Sorry. you just got to take the Ravens. And so, with that, we and have. That MVP tour starts Thursday night with the game we're going to talk about in a minute. Well, here's what we have. Not only that. I thought we were just going to skip over that game. We agreed it wasn't worth the effort. They've already decided it. <laughs> He's got jokes about it before. I'm the motherfucking fucking one who blows the shots. And you better pay me the respect that I gave your brother or we're going to have a problem. A bad one. Now get the fuck out of here. Now get the fuck out of here. All right. We have the Dallas Cowboys. And it may not only be an MVP tour. It probably will be. Don't call it a comeback, comeback player of the year as well. Could it possibly be that one player would actually take both of those in one season? I'd like to know what the odds on and the line is for that one because I think I put money on that one. Yeah. Find the out Dallas first, Cowboys yeah. with the line floating from eight points this morning. You can bet each one of those, yes. but you can't bet them together. 
So, you know. Gotcha. Um, the Dallas Cowboys currently with Zach Martin out. Zach Martin is out. Are eight and a half point underdogs. I will say that the Cowboys, other than Zach Martin, are completely healthy. Everybody who was on the injury report has practiced fully today and throughout most of the week. The Cowboys, they say they have no chance in hell. Roz, your thoughts as the only non-Cowboy fan in here? Well, Well, I thought a lot about whether or not I wanted to keep this job. It's got nothing to do with who you pick. And then I realized I don't get paid, so I took the bucks. Exactly. Here's what I want to say. I think the eight points is a lot. Yes. But I also think that the preparation time, there's just something about the preparation. And, and look, I know the talking heads are talking about it, but I have to say it. The lack of reps in live game. They played hard in their in their mixed intramural practices. Everybody has. But the live reps, there's just a little bit extra being in the stadium with the lights and the whistles and everything else going on. I'm taking the bucks. Okay. D two Stewart. What are you picking? I strongly disagree, my friend, on the other side. And this is where haters come in and say, oh, you're a homer. But in my head, the narrative says that Tampa Bay comes out a little bit kind of full of themselves because of the pageantry of the night. And Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, Amari Cooper, Zeke, looking the way Zeke is looking. Dalton mm-hmm. Schultz, Blake Jarwin, Pollard, and crew. I know we don't have Martin, and McGovern's no Martin, but – He's not a scrub either. Mm-hmm. He'll, we'll be we'll be fine there. Right. Uh, our defense, we know what it was last year. We got Dan Quinn in. We turned over what about seventy percent of that roster. Yeah. And most of that blood that we brought in is hungry. And I think Randy Gregory, who I've been excited about just as much as Dak coming back this whole time. I think him and Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons. Don't make life easy on Tom Brady and maybe mm-hmm. make him dance a little bit. And we pull it out by three points. It's the first week of the season, so I could be crazy calling a high-scoring game on both sides because Tampa Bay does have a really good defense, but it is the first week of the season. So if they're in their own heads and in their in their own ways, if you're going to take advantage of that defense, it's week one, and I'm going 34-31 Dallas. Okay. Roz, do you know? Gonna come out and pop. Do you know who the dangerous person, most dangerous person in the world is? Some person that has nothing to lose. You know it. The Dallas Cowboys got nothing to lose. They are literally left as roadkill. Nobody thinks that they have any chance whatsoever. They talk about well, Dak Prescott. He hasn't had any live action. But uh, as much as Tom Brady has actually played. He's only played 21 snaps and 15 passes in preseason. And we know Tom Brady never gets touched regardless. So basically, Tom Brady playing in preseason is like 7-on-7. As it is for most quarterbacks in the NFL because they don't really get touched. Now, I know people will say Dak Prescott and everything else. They haven't had time to work together. But I say that the Dallas Cowboys collectively this offseason have actually had more work together as a team than any other team in the NFL. Because when the NFLPA was saying, we want you players to boycott working at the facilities, the Dallas Cowboys already had 26 players that were working at the facilities. They had complete complete 100% participation in all of the OTA practices. And on top of that, their quarterback, Dak Prescott, has his own field at his house, a bomb-ass house, mind you, that the guys come over, you know, go swimming, shoot some hoops, play some PlayStation. Oh, and they throw the rock around on that field. And with Dak Prescott 
knowing these guys, this offense, this offensive coordinator, as much as they do. Kellen Moore, this is his third year. Amari Cooper, who literally got off an airplane, played a game from that point on, has been butter with Dak Prescott. C.D. Lamb, that guy, he, he's like flypaper. If he, get, if he touches the ball, he's coming down with it. And even without Zach Martin, that offensive line is in a hell of a lot better shape than it ever was last year. Mm. And with that, I look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I've always said, and I live by this, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. I think about the age of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Namakin Sue was like 34. Um, Levante David, I think, is what? What is he, 32? 30? 32. 32, you know, I think. You, 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 JPP, he's like 32, 30, something like that. They are older guys that, you know, finally got that ring and kind of can, can kick back a little bit, you know? And seeing and knowing that teams that go to the Super Bowl, with the exception of New England, step back the following year, I'm taking the Cowboys in that eight and a half points. <laughs> I dropped the mic, but I don't want to break it for tomorrow night because I'm going to need it. it. It's not enough to change my mind, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers do have JPP's replacement, first-round pick Joe Tryon, which I like the kid a lot, probably just because I'm partial to him with Dynasty fo fantasy football, but yeah. Tampa Bay, we're coming for you. You're gonna get popped in the mouth. There's a whole lot more. Are you shutting your mother ass up? Are you trying to ruin my buzz? Are you trying to ruin oh. my buzz there? All no, right. we got to pop them in the mouth. I ain't worried about Tampa Bay. Okay, so that is our very first pick segment for week number one. We'll find out next week if we are any good at this. If there's any major surprises. And uh, whether or not, I guess you should listen again. <laughs> guys, come I back want... and see us next week and see how bad oh, yeah. one of us did. I, I hope you guys enjoyed what we did here. Um, I, I definitely had a good time. Um, as you can see, we're still partying here tonight. I think I'm going to leave this on to drive my, my neighbors crazy tonight because they'll <laughs> be looking like, what the hell's going on all night long? But as I gotta, always, I'm sorry, go ahead. Ross. I got to refill the rum. You're drinking rum? Oh snap! Okay, well yeah, that, I got I got my I've been drinking my rum and cokes. Why do you think I made my picks like I did? Oh, okay. With that being said, it's time to get up on out of here. This is for Tad Prescott. Leave me alone. This is for Cowboys fans. I wore your colors. Leave me alone in my mentions. This is for guys like Graziano, but most importantly, this is for my arch nemesis Dominique Foxworth. <laughs> Egg on my face on television. 